Welcome back guys. So today I want to do a real quick one. I want to touch on how you can customize your experience within RetroPie while you're gaming. So this is mostly going to be a visual thing but also controller wise. So we're going to touch on bezels, shaders, and specific game controls. So I've already done a video on bezels and I will link that in the description if you want to peep that out. Get more information on where you can get some bezels, how you can install them and apply them. In this video, we will only briefly touch on that topic, but let's go ahead and get in the game so we can get this party started. So we're going to check out Exevious. And like I said, I've already touched on bezels, and you will see here that I do have this game set with a vertical bezel. Now, the only thing I want to show with bezels, and a lot of people have asked, well, how do I remove them? Because there's a lot of images coming out now that have bezels preset, that have shaders preset, and stuff like that and some people don't like that so in order to remove your bezel what we're going to do is press select and y or whatever you have set as enable hotkey and menu now for our bezels we'll go ahead and go to settings go to on-screen display on-screen overlay the first option now down here where it says overlay preset that is where you will select your overlays that you have installed and that will be applied to whatever game you are playing at the moment. And you can save it in a couple ways, and we'll talk about that with the other options in a moment. But if you just want that display, that overlay to be gone, you'll go to display overlay, press the right button or you know directional button right, turn it off. That's it. That's all you have to do. Have display overlay is off. Back out. Now you can go ahead and save that per game or for the core the core is going to be the system shown below so MAME 2003 whatever emulator that game is using and you're in with within RetroArch and it's a lib retro core you know emulator if you save it for that core whatever you just changed will save for every game that MAME 2003 or whatever system you're using it, it'll change that for everything if you just save it as a game override it will only save that for the game so just to show you no more bezels. I didn't save it though, but no more bezels. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. Just for this video. Now the other thing we can do is, once you look at these bezels anyway, a lot of them are set up you know, with a curvature, like an old CRT TV. So I'm going to want to set a curvature shader to this image so it fits that bezel and it looks more like a CRT on my you know, high def TV. So what you'll do is go to quick menu, go down the shaders and press A. Now, once you're in here, if no shaders are set, it should look like this. Shader pass is zero. I'm gonna go ahead and press right to put one shader pass. Right now I just have it as the stock and I'll show you what the reason the stock shader is for. But we'll go ahead and press A on shader number zero. If we, actually before we do that, if we go to shader passes, you could add multiple shaders by changing how many passes there are, but I'm just gonna do one. So I'll press A on shader zero. I'm gonna go down here to shaders. Now for this one, we're in a vertical shooter and I kinda want it to have that curvature and look like a CRT TV. So I'm gonna press A on CRT pi curvature vertical. Now there's a ton of shaders in here and I have not messed with most of them. I have used a handful of them to check them out. And these CRT Pi um, shaders are some of the more popular ones that people will use. And I kind of dig them. You know, I'm not a big shader person, but they have kind of grown on me. So I'll press A on this guy. So now you see we have set that one. Shader filter, I'm gonna set it to linear, but you could put it the nearest or don't care. Scale, you can change the scale, 1x, 2x, etc. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Now, if we just backed out and went back to our game, the shader will not be applied. You have to hit A on apply changes. So let's go ahead and do that. And now, let's go ahead and go back into the game so you can see what she looks like with the shader on. So this is gonna be the game with shaders on. So it kind of gives that, that CRT look and feel to it, which some people like, some people don't like. Now, the other thing 
if you have an image that has shaders and you just don't like shaders, you can go back in the shaders. Now, before we touch on turning it off, if you wanted to save that, like I said, you could save that as a game override or save it as core. I would highly recommend saving. If, if it's an image you're setting up yourself from scratch, you could save it the core, and then once you're going through testing games, you can change the, the game overrides. But if the image is already set, for example, if I save this as a core override, everything in MAME 2003 is going to use these settings that I just used. So all of them will have the same vertical CRT pie shader. All of them will have the same vertical uh, bezel. So we don't want to do that. Like I said, save it as a game override instead. And then every time you boot this game up, it's going to use those settings, that same shader, that same bezel. Now, my one tip, like I said, if you're building an image on your own or you're setting up an image with these options that don't already have them set, find a game. You can just preset everything up, save it as a core override, and then go back in and change game by game. But if you've already done that and you save it as a core, like I said, you're going to screw up all your games for whatever core you are in. And like I said, it's mentioned at the bottom, MAME 2003. It's going to be any LibRetro core emulators will use RetroArch. So, you know, you'll have, you know, FBA Alpha 2012, MAME 2010, etc. So just pay attention to what you're doing there. But back to turning off the shaders. If we go back in the shaders and say you don't, you don't like this, you can just, you can put it to zero and then apply changes. The shader pass to zero and apply changes and... You'll, you'll be good to go. But if you just want to get back to the stock image and you're having an issue saving that or it's always booting up into the, the, the shader, go to shader, whatever shader it is, and then go down to the stock shader. Press A on that bad boy. Now, if you changed any of these other options, you're going to want to turn them off because the stock shader will just not look right. It's, it's supposed to take it back to stock the way it's supposed to look, but if you have the filter and everything else changed, it won't look the original way that it looked stock within the image. So let's go ahead and apply changes. Now, like I said, you can go back to save game overrides, and then this game, every time you boot it up, is going to look the way we just set it up. And as you see, it is back to stock. Now, we've touched on the bezels and the shaders which are pretty cool in my opinion i like them and you know there's a lot of people who know how to do all this but there's been a lot of people asking these questions so i decided let's go ahead and take a quick look now the other thing real quick if you want to customize a little bit further for example this game and i've already changed it but most of these two button arcade games are going to use the b and the y button some people might not like that what you can do is go to quick menu Go down the controls. And as you see, I've already changed it. Button 1 to B, button 2 to A. But originally it was set like this. It was button 2 was Y. And that was just stock for this game. Now, once you are changing these button assignments, they don't change them for RetroArch. They're just changing them either for this core or for this game at that moment. Unless you save it as a game remap or save it as a core remap. I would not save it as a core remap. I would only save it as a game remap. So this is stock B and Y for button one and two. So B button is gonna shoot, the the Y button is gonna be dropping our bombs or missiles, whatever they are. I would prefer the A button, so I will change it to A. And like I said, that's not changing the functions of the buttons. If you go back into emulation station, nothing has changed. If you go to Super Nintendo and play a game, nothing has been changed. You're just changing essentially how the buttons register for that moment. You're not changing the actual A button, B button to something else. You're just changing how they register. So if we want to keep it that way, we'll go to save game remap. Boom. Now, every time I go into this game, my button assignment is going to be that way. Now, the other cool thing, and I like using this, and I know I've shown this before, but for, for arcade games you know that use two buttons or three buttons say you have an arcade stick that you're using or you're on a bar top you might want to change that you know you might not like playing you know uh metal slug and the buttons are all weird you know you got three buttons in a row you'd rather just change it to those three buttons in a row instead of 
you know, a bottom button, a top button, and a middle button. It just doesn't feel right sometimes. For some people, that's okay, but you might want to change that. So Neo Geo, for example, has an A, B, C, and D button. It only uses four buttons on Neo Geo. So it's cool to go in here and change it to that layout that the arcade originally was set to, and then just save it as a game remap file. And you're pretty much good to go. There's, there's you know, nothing more to it. It, it just, it's really cool to be able to customize your gaming experience and to get things playing and looking the way you want. This was just one little bit of information on things you can do. Just wanted to kind of do a little refresher because a lot of people have been asking about these. So I hope this was helpful to those of you who are interested. Smash that like button if you could. I really would appreciate that. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. With that said, I will catch you guys next time. Boom! <laughs>